Hi guys, it's Fabiola. I'm here to bring you another short project, this time in Python. We're going to be building a color detection program using the pandas and the OpenCV packages. We're going to be giving you an image file and a CSV file, which you're going to be needing for this project. And what this program does is that if you give it an image, it will open up a separate window with this image. And if you double click anywhere on this image that you gave to the program, the program will give you the name of the color of the pixel, which you just clicked on. And you can click as many times as you want and it'll give you all the names of these pixels that you're clicking on. But other than that, it's a very short program. So I hope you guys enjoy it. So we're gonna begin. We're gonna start by opening our IDE. In my case, I use PyCharm and I'm going to name the directory for this project and I'm going to make this project inherit the global packages and we're going to create the project. Next we're going to open a new file, in this case a python file. You can name the file um, whatever you want, in my case I named it cd for color detection. And so to start we're going to import uh, the three packages that we're going to be using for this program. We're going to import pandas, spd, we're going to import argparse, and from the cv2 library, we're going to import the cv2 package. And now we're just going to wait for the packages to load. So first, we're going to be creating an argument parser to take the image path from the command line. So this is for when we're running the program on the command line, we are adding this brand new argument. In this case, it's going to be the path to the image, which we're going to be doing the color detection. So we're going to do AP, which is going to be our argument parser. It's going to be equal arg parse dot argument parser. And then we're actually going to add an, another argument. And it, it will be either a dash I or two dashes followed by image. One can use either of those and it's gonna be a required argument. And we're gonna give a little help message called image path in case the client needs help with the arguments. So we're gonna parse the arguments in the command line using the bars function, which returns the dictionary attribute of the object. And then we're gonna create the image path variable by indexing into the image attribute of the argument, which is parsed. Next, we're gonna actually read the image with OpenCV, and we're gonna get the dimensions of the image. And from the dimensions, we're gonna create the height, the width, and the area variables. Next, we're gonna declare a couple of global variables, we're gonna, which we're gonna be needing later in the program. After this, we're going to read in the CSV file with pandas, and for, but first we're going to create this array with all of the column names um, in the CSV file. So when we read the CSV file, we give the name of the file, and then we give this array um, with all the column names, and then we specify that there is no header in the file. So next we're going to create a function which is going to find the color in the colors.csv file which most closely resembles the color of the pixel we are clicking in the image. So we're going to give three arguments to this get color name function which is going to be the red, the green and the blue component of the color of the pixel that we're clicking in the image. We're going to start by declaring this minimum variable which is going to be positive infinity and this cname string object which we're going to use to store the color name which most closely resembles the color of the pixel we clicked and so now we're going to loop over every single one of the colors in the colors.csv file and we're going to find the color which is the least distant to the color that we clicked in the image and so we compute this distance between the color we clicked and the current color we're examining in the colors.csv file by getting the absolute value, the difference between the R value of the pixel we clicked 
and the R value of the color we're currently examining plus the absolute value of the difference between the green value of the pixel we clicked and the green value of the color we're currently examining plus the absolute value of the difference between the blue value of the color we clicked and the blue value of the color we're currently examining. And so we check if this distance we just computed is less than the minimum, then we're going to set the minimum variable equal to this new smaller distance and the color name equal to the current color we're examining. And then at the end, after we looped up over every single one of the colors, we're just going to return the color name, which in this case is going to be the color that most closely resembles the color of the pixel, which we clicked. And next, we're going to define another function which is just going to be a function to get the xy coordinates of the mouse double click as well as to get the blue green and red components of the color of the pixel which the user just clicked and so we're going to write this we're going to define this draw function and we're going to give it as arguments an event x y flag and parameters and so if the event that just happens is a left button double click we're going to specify that we're using the global variables that we declared earlier. Then we're going to set clicked equals to true, the x position equal to x, the y position equal to y. And next, we're going to use the x and y coordinates of the event or the click that just happened to extract the blue, green, and red values of the pixel. And then we're going to make sure that, they're, that the three values are integers. Next, we're going to create a window but we want to specify if the area of the in window which we're going to be creating is going to be less than or equal to 662,000 pixels then we're going to set it so that the window is not resizable otherwise if it's greater than 662,000 pixels then the client that is using this program is going to be able to resize the window and this is only because if the image that you're using with this program is too big sometimes it'll take up more than your screen so if you aren't, aren't able to resize it you aren't going to be able to like check the colors of the pixels which are out of your screen next we're going to set a mouse handler for the specified window in this case it's going to be the window image which we just named and so every time an event happens we're going to call the draw function Next, we're going to have a while loop that will only break if a certain condition is met. So otherwise, we'll keep looping. That's why we have the while one. First, we want to show the image using CV2. Next, we're going to add a conditional. So if clicked, in this case, clicked is true only if there was a left button double click. And so if there was, we want to show the user the color of the pixel which they just click and we're going to do so in a little rectangle that we're going to be drawing on the top left corner of the image in which we're doing the color detection so first we're going to create a variable which is going to specify where we want the rectangle to end or where we want the bottom right corner of the rectangle to be and we're going to make it proportional to the image width and height and same thing with where we want the text to start in this case, we want the upper left corner of the text to be. And we're also going to make it proportional to the image width and height. And so now we're going to create the rectangle where this text string will appear with the color name. And so we're going to set the rectangle in the image, which we read earlier. The start point of the rectangle would be at pixel 2020. The end point or the lower right point of the rectangle would be at the location which we just defined with the rec and variable. And then the color of the rectangle will be BGR, or in this case, the color of the pixel that they just clicked. And the thickness will be minus one, which just fills in the rectangle with the color which we just specified. And now we're going to create a text string, which is going to be displayed on the rectangle which we just created and it's going to display the color name and the rgb values of the pixel which the user just clicked and then we want to make sure that if the pixel that the user clicked is a very light color the text will be that the text is displayed in black so that it's readable 
since the color of the rectangle in which we're going to be displaying the text in is going to match the color of the pixel that the user clicked. And so inside the image, we're going to put the text that the text string that we just created and it's going to start at the point that we just specified and then we're going to use this font um, Hershey's triplex or you can use whichever font I think CV2 has like seven fonts that you can choose from and the font scale will be one the color will be black and the thickness will be one again and the line time would, would be type line AA Otherwise, if it's not such a light color, we can display the string in white. So it's just going to be the same thing, but white. So after we've displayed the color for this click, we're going to set click back again to false. And so finally, we're going to break out of the loop when the user hits the escape key. So we're going to do if cv2.wait key and we're gonna give it a delay of 20 milliseconds. And so this, what this function is gonna return is the code of the key that was pressed. And we're gonna bitwise and this code with 0xff, which is just the hexadecimal constant of eight ones in binary, which is just a complicated way of saying that we will just be keeping the last eight digits of the binary code that the cv2 weight key function returns and so when this code does match the 27 or the escape key code then we will break out of the loop and then after we're done we're just going to destroy all windows and that's it that is the program for color detection so finally we just want to make sure that our program works so first we're going to move the files that we're going to give to you to the folder where the rest of your files for this project are. Then you're going to open the terminal and change your directory to the directory where your project is stored. Next, we're going to run the program. And in this case, I'm going to be using the same image which we're going to be giving to you as a sample image. But you could use any one of your images as long as in, they're in the same directory as the rest of your project. And so by running this command, the program will open the separate window with the image that you gave it. And you can just click around and see the different names of the colors that you're clicking. And as you can see, it's pretty fun to use this program or to click around the different pixels and see the different colors and the color names. So I hope you guys enjoy writing the program and that you guys have fun with the color detection. You can always use your own images. So that also can be quite fun. So thank you for listening to this tutorial and I'll see you guys next time.